I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts and Lazy Girl Designs, and welcome to the Great Gift Sew Along. We wanted to get crafty with you as the holiday season approaches, so I've put together the best of our best patterns for you to make handcrafted gifts for your loved ones with ease and joy. We'll be making Perfect Pouches by Lazy Girl Designs, Rock Candy Table Topper by Jaybird Quilts, Sweepy Paws by Lazy Girl Designs, and finishing up with Candy Dish Pillows by Jaybird Quilts. Welcome back to the Rock Candy Table Topper. In our last two videos, we selected fabrics and went ahead and did our cutting, and today we're going to work on sewing the sections together. Let's get started. Rock Candy is pieced in six sections. I like to call them pizza slices or pie wedges. And because of our orientation of our shapes that we've worked so hard to fussy cut, we wanna take extra care to make sure that things don't get flipped around at this stage. Say for instance, we sewed this little guy like this. It's not the end of the world, but it's not what you had intended. And if you want everything to be in the same direction or in specific direction, you want to take note of that now. So I'm going to slide out one wedge to show you. This is our upper right wedge. And we are going to sew this into a triangle by sewing rows. So this row is done, it's just one triangle. This row has two pieces, this row has three pieces, this row has four pieces. So I am going to go ahead and flip this onto here and pin it in place. Now, I could easily sew it here or here. I wanna make sure when I get to the machine I know exactly where I need to sew it. So to give myself the best shot, I'm gonna take these pins, I really like these tiny little fine glass head pins and I'm gonna put two pins and I'm gonna point them towards the seam that I wanna sew. That way, when I get to the machine, I know that that's not my intention, that this is my intention. So I'm gonna put that back down. Now I could either start with these two or I could start with these two. I'm gonna to choose to start with these two and the blunt points really help us know exactly where to line it up. Again, I'm just gonna take two fine glass head pins In this in place. If you've followed along my sew alongs before, you know that I'm generally not a pinner. That is different with fussy cutting. I wanna make sure that everything stays exactly where I want it to be. So I do pin a lot more when I have things like this where the orientation matters. You pin as much or as little as you want. If your design wall area is right next to your sewing machine and you're gonna be putting everything back, then you're not as concerned, then you can go ahead and pin as much or as little as you want. And I'm gonna leave that little one, but I'm gonna go ahead and pin these final two. And at this point, you have triangles that have one side bias, and two, or two sides bias, and one side straight of grain. Due to the design of the fabric, if you're using a polka dot like me, it doesn't matter the orientation. If you're using a stripe or something else, you might wanna put it in a certain way. You can put the straight of grain on the outside, but since we'll be adding a border, it doesn't really matter either way. So now that I have those pinned, I'm gonna head on over to the machine. One last note is that when I'm piecing this in a scrappy way like the original, I'll often work on multiple wedges at a time. Because I want to make sure that nothing gets turned around, I am going to work on one wedge at a time. So I'm gonna sew these four, press the seams open, add the other pieces, finish the rows, put that together, once I have that done, then I'm gonna move on to the other pizza slices to continue to put rock candy together. I have my pieces that I pinned over at my design area and I'm at my machine. And I have everything set up for a scant quarter inch seam. A scant quarter inch seam is just one thread over from a quarter inch. What it does is it accounts for the space that the thread will take up in the seam allowance. If you're not familiar with scant quarter inch, there's a link below with some more information. And I am sewing with RFL 2600, it's my favorite, medium gray. I like to use it because it kind of blends naturally into everything. If you are working with a lot of darks or a lot of lights, I would suggest picking one thread that will blend in well with most of it in case you see it. So I'm just gonna jump right on in. I'm gonna remove my pins. 
I mainly pinned to know which side I was sewing on and to keep my pieces together right, but I'm gonna remove them. You can decide to leave them in. Either way works as long as you don't sew over them. You never wanna sew over a pin. You can damage your machine, you could damage the um, throw plate, you could break a needle and send it up towards your face. Um, lots of bad things can happen. It's not good practice, so don't sew over pins. And just nice and slow. So, so far I have four pieces pinned for this first pizza wedge. And when I'm working on a rock candy that is um, scrappy, I'll work on everything at once. But when I'm working on something that is fussy cut, I like to work on one wedge at a time. So I'm just focused right now on these four pieces. And then I am going to bring them back over to my design area to make sure that I keep track of everything. So even before I finish, I know that the first two pieces that I sewed are my bottom row. And I wanna make sure I don't turn anything around. Um, it is helpful if you have taken a cell phone photo of your project before you begin piecing so that you have that to reference um, if you lose track of something. So this is gonna be my bottom row. So now I know that I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. And I'm gonna piece my last one that I already went ahead and pinned. So this is where I'm at now. I have gone ahead and continued to put my pieces back with each other so I don't lose track of where they go. And at this stage, I don't have anything that's intersecting itself yet, so I am just going to go ahead and do a quick little seam roll and finish piecing my rows together. And then I think I'll get my iron out to press all of these before I sew my rows together to complete my triangle. This is my Violet Craft seam roller. If you've never seen one of these before, it's a very handy tool to have around when you don't want to turn your iron on and you're right next to your machine. It just can give you a nice seam flat enough to keep going without having to turn your iron on. So now I am going to piece these two together and I'm going to piece this together. Um, I could go ahead and do this one as well. I could either wait till that's pressed or not. And with the alignment of these, it's the same as when we did the other ones. We're gonna use our blunt points to know exactly where we need to go. Put some pins in there. Same process. Just gonna continue with that same scant quarter inch seam. Pulling my pins out as I go. And now that I have these done, I'm gonna go ahead and get my iron out to press these so that I can then sew these rows together to complete the pizza wedge. I'm over here at my iron and I'm gonna go ahead and press these. So for the seams I haven't pressed yet, I'm gonna go ahead and open them up with my finger. And then I am going to take my heat resistant stiletto. It is silicone on the one end, so it can go up against the iron and it doesn't melt and it works really well for helping to hold the seam open so I don't have to get my finger too close to the iron. And quick reminder, um, for those of you who've been around, you know this, but pressing is different than ironing. This is pressing. We like to press up and down. Ironing is this. We iron clothes, sometimes we iron yardage, the back of a quilt, but we don't iron quilt blocks. Um, if we iron quilt blocks, we can stretch them and damage the bias. We can go down and do a little bit of a wiggle, um, but we mainly do up and down. That is how we are going to get some nice flat seams without distorting our block and our piecing in any way. So again, I will open this up. And all of the tools that I talk about, um, like this and the seam roller, none of them are required. Um, they're just things I actually use. Um, so I like to share with you the tools that I actually use and actually find handy um, so that if you come across them or are interested, you know that I think that they work really well and can go ahead and get them and add them to your toolbox if you would like. Again, last one. 
And now my pizza slice is in three parts, three rows. And I'm gonna go ahead and head on over to the machine and sew these three rows together to complete my block. I'm going to do a little bit of pinning. My blunt corners will help me here. So we'll start with the top two. We're gonna flip them onto each other and it should line up perfectly where my blunt corner and my blunt corner go right onto the edges there. And then here in the middle, what we're gonna be looking for is that the pressed open seam allowance of this piece, that point, grab a pin to show you, that point right there is going to line up with this seam allowance here. And when we're working with four patch things that are squares, we line things up exactly. We don't line them up exactly here. If we lined those two raw points up, you can notice this is too far over here and that's too far over there. So we are going to focus on lining up the ends and then making sure that our overlap is what it should be. So I'm gonna kind of get that in place and put a pin and same over here, a little bit of pin. And you can choose to pin the middle as well if you'd like. Um, it's a small enough area here that I don't think I need to. And I'm gonna head on over to the machine. With the same settings we've been doing, we keep our machine settings the same for all of our piecing, slow and steady. And at this point, a stiletto may come in handy um, to make sure that you don't flip these seams because they're pressed open. Sometimes your presser foot might want to flip that one back. Um, so a stiletto can come in handy. Never want to get your finger too close to a machine. I have learned that the hard way and have sewn my finger one time. It's a very long time ago. It's one of those lessons you only need to learn one time. You don't need to learn that one twice. Um, I don't do any back stitching at the beginning and the end um, in this project right now when I'm sewing um, the rows or piecing the rows together to create the pizza wedges because there is a border on this. Um, you can back stitch if you would like, but I don't find that necessary. Back on over at the iron. Going to get that seam finger pressed open. And I am pressing here on a quilter's cut and press. Sometimes I use the press and uh, square and blocker. This is the cut and press. This one has a cutting mat on the other side. This one's small. It's just, uh, I think, 14 by 20. Um, and so it's really nice. I'm actually over at my, um, right next to my sewing machine right now. I can move this and show you. So I am at my table and this is nice because I can put this on my table and it doesn't damage it. Um, and it really works well for going to classes too because the other side is a cutting mat if you need that. So I find this be very, very helpful. It's by Jude and Taylor. Again, not required, just something that I find very, very helpful. So now that I have the top and the bottom pressed, we're going to pin it in the same manner that we pinned the first two um, sections, this one and this one, and then we will have our pizza wedge finished. So again, gonna line up our blunt corner over here, and put a pin in, and same thing over here. So cutting the blunt corners off your triangles, um, if you're using the sidekick ruler, it can take a little bit more time. It doesn't as much with the fussy cut shapes, but it really is worth it um, for the help in piecing. And again, that point of the piece in my seam allowance should line up with that point there. And same thing over here. And since this is a little bit longer of a spread, I am gonna just take two little pins. As you know, I am not generally a pinner. I pin as little as I can. Pinning is definitely a personal preference, but I find pinning helps here, so I go ahead and do it. And I suggest you pin as little or as much as you feel that you need. All right, I'm gonna get that last seam sewn. And again, pull out my pins as I go. Never wanna sew over pins. Mm. 
And I'm going to sew back onto my leader ender. Um, having a leader ender is a good way to avoid having a nest of threads. Um, by sewing onto a scrap, you always keep your chain going. And we're going to press this last piece to finish our pizza wedge. And then I will put this back on my design wall and go get the next one and repeat these steps to piece and press all six of my wedges. And I'm really loving how this is coming out. I know I shouldn't pick favorites, um, but I definitely have made more rock candy than any other um, of my patterns. It just has so many possibilities and is so much fun, and I really love doing all this fussy cutting. So I'm gonna give that a good press. And one last note is when I'm not filming, I do like to press with steam. Um, it fogs up the camera, so I don't have that on now, but um, I will probably press this with steam before I hop back on. So if you like steam, I highly encourage it. If you're not a fan, that's okay too. So I'm gonna go piece my other ones and I'll see you back in a bit. I have finished piecing all of my pizza slices and now it's time to put these together to complete the center of my rock candy table topper. One quick note, it's important that our piecing is as accurate as possible when sewing these so that this step goes together well. We want these to go together perfectly and when these are 60 degree triangles, it works much better than if they're off. Now, it's okay if they're off by a little bit. If you see, if you put these two together, you'll see one kind of curves off to the top a little bit. If I put the top together, the center comes apart. Subtle things like that can be worked in. But for example, if your piece curved a lot like that, or if instead of a 60 degree triangle, it got smaller and was more like a 56 or somehow got wider, then things get a little more complicated and you can end up with a bubble in the middle or things bowing. So you want things to be as accurate as possible, but they don't need to be exactly perfect. Now we're gonna piece these three together for the top and these three together for the bottom. So we'll begin by piecing two together and I'll show you how I'm gonna pin those. Just gonna put them right sides together and line up these three seams on top of these three seams and pin along the way. And because I have that tiny little bow, I'm just gonna make sure to ease things. This is where bias actually is your friend. If things get off a little bit is you can stretch things kind of back into place. So I'm going to just pin along here. One more. And then I'll leave this one here on my design wall. I'll leave this one here and I will pin these two together. So again, right sides together. And now I'm gonna head on over to the machine to begin sewing these pieces together. I'm over at my machine with my first two pinned piece to triangles. I'm gonna go ahead and sew these same scant quarter inch seam that we've been working on. And as I mentioned, I don't backstitch at the beginning or end of these since we will be adding a border. I'm gonna go nice and slow and steady. I'd rather do this accurately one time than have to unpick stitches. I like to pull up my pins as I go so I don't sew over them. And I like to do what I call the peel method, which is I kind of peel the top piece up and adjust as needed to make sure things are lined up perfectly. Take my next one out. This is where a stiletto can also come in handy. Hold things in place so nothing flips. Good. And since I have my bottom pair, pinned, I'm going to do them as well. Now I prefer to sew from the outside in. I, I like to have the th angles coming towards me like this and not going up. So even though I pinned on this side, I would prefer to sew from this side. So I'm going to make sure I take the pins out in advance so that I don't sew over them. That's just a personal preference. I just find I like the way things look and I have more success when starting that way. Again, I'm going to peel back, check my placement, so my pins are on the bottom, I'm going to pull them out. I'm 
I'm gonna go ahead and press the seam before adding the third one. Sometimes I do just use the seam roller at the machine, um, but since this is a longer seam with a lot of things coming together, I'm just gonna go ahead and press it. So again, I'll finger press it open. I have my heat resistant stiletto handy. go and I'm gonna find my next upper piece which up oh, that is not the right one as you can tell my characters are not going the right direction so good double check for myself there we go this is the one that I want and grab my pins and pin this one and do the same thing with my bottom half Press this one open. This is why I usually finger press first. Didn't do it there. Definitely works better when you do. I like to press from the back and then give it a good press from the front as well. Get my final little slice. There we go. And I know that I want to be sewing from this side. So instead of putting the pins on this side like I did last time and having to correct myself, I'm gonna put them in from this side from the start. Now just as I did with these seams, I'm gonna sew these in the same manner. And nice and slow. Use my stiletto, take out my pins as I go. I now have both of my halves pieced. And before I go ahead and piece them together, I'm gonna press these seams as well. Now it's time to put the two of these together. I could simply put them together and pin them, but your eye is going to come to the center. Now in this case, because of my colors, your eye is going to go to many places, but I really wanna make sure that those center points line up. So over at the machine, I'm gonna show you how I do something called a hang pin to get these lined up, and then we'll worry about the rest of the intersections. So a hang pin is called a hang pin because there is a pin that literally hangs. And so how we do a hang pin, is we take a pin and we put it in exactly at the intersection where our three points meet. So this is what it looks like from the other side. And then we put it in right where our other ones meet with the idea that where we're putting this pin is where we want things to perfectly meet. And then we're going to give these kind of like a little kiss, hold these together. We're gonna to keep this pin so that it forms a T we don't want it to go to the side like this, up, down. We want it to be perfectly perpendicular to our fabric. So if you see right now, it's kind of angled to the side. So you wanna move your fabrics around until it's perfectly perpendicular, because then it's in the right place. And you're gonna let it just hang there. And while it hangs there, you're gonna take two other pins and put them on either side. And then you're gonna remove the hang pin. Now we could sew this whole thing, hope it works out, and if it doesn't, take it out. But that's no fun. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sew about half to three quarters of an inch on either side of that intersection, check it, and then if it's good, we're gonna leave it there and sew the entire rest of the seam. I call it, I think of it as thread pinning. Um, sometimes people ask, is it a basing stitch? You have to take it out. You don't have to take it out. It's the same thread, same stitch length with your thread. So we're gonna start about, like I said, about a half to three quarters above the intersection. And we're gonna go super slow. And I have my eye on the needle and on this point. And I want my needle to perfectly go into that point. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my piece off. Snip my little leader ender off. 
And we're going to take these two pins out. Let's see how it turned out. And that is pretty perfect. I am very happy with that. So I'm now going to leave that center and I am going to focus on pinning my other intersections or I can go ahead and sew without pinning. And as I mentioned before, I like to sew from the outside in. So instead of sewing this entire seam, I'm actually going to sew from the outside to the center, stop, flip it, and sew from the outside to the center. It does take a little bit more time, um, so it's something that you know is not for everyone, but I find that it really helps everything to line up just that much better, and it's worth a little bit extra time here to do that. Gonna pin this top half. Let me get those lined up. I'm gonna take my pins out as I get close. And so now this just feels like sewing two pizza wedges together, even though at this point I'm sewing everything together. And I'm just gonna stop. I'm gonna overlap onto my center threads and get close to the center point. Don't need to overlap the whole thing. Cut my threads. And so now I have half of my center seam sewn and I'm going to pin this upper section, finish it. And there we go. I have the center of my rock candy done. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this final seam and then it is time to begin to add my borders. Now generally it doesn't matter which side you add your borders to first because you're working with non-directional or solids or whatnot. And if you look carefully in the pattern, I just um, have you sew them on the top and the bottom first and then two of the sides and then the final two sides. But if you think of most quilts, you put your side borders on first and you finish with your top and your bottom borders. So if you want that same effect here, you'll want to make sure that you start with your side borders and finish with your top and bottom borders. I think that's what I'm gonna do with this one here today. You'll see that this is not laying perfectly flat. Uh, that happens and I am okay with that. It is minor and I can press it out and it will definitely flatten out once it is quilted. Um, so don't panic if there's a little bit um, of not so flatness here. I'm gonna see if I can press with steam for a moment without the camera getting too foggy. I prefer to press with steam. Amazing what a little bit of steam can do. And you will see that I'm doing more now of what you would think of as traditional ironing. I'm making sure though that when I move my iron, I'm not really pushing. I don't push until I have it finished moving. And I'm only doing this because all of my inside seams are done and I'm making sure not to move like this on my outside seams. There we go. So I have cut my border pieces as directed in the pattern, you have three different lengths. And I'm gonna start with my shortest two and put them on opposite sides. And so I'm gonna put them in the upper right and the bottom left. And I am not going to pin. I'm just gonna head on over to the machine. And one note is I'm going to sew from this side and I'll show you why when we get to the machine. I'm over at my machine and normally you sew with the smaller thing on top. So you would naturally want to sew with this on top and go. But in this case, I have all of these intersections that I wanna make sure that I don't lose these points. And I don't really care as much what's going on with my border, there's no points in my border. So I'm gonna flip this upside down and I'm gonna pay attention to where my needle is in regards to those three points because that's what really matters to me 
is making sure that I don't sew too generous and trim off those points. So nice and slow and steady. And this piece is long enough that you don't need to worry about pinning it or matching it exactly. You wanna make sure you don't stretch it, but in a project this small, that shouldn't be an issue. Stiletto comes in handy here to make sure that those seams don't flip. rotate this around to the other side and I do have another video where I show an alternate background of six different fabrics and you piece the table topper together slightly differently um, and the border so I will place a link to that below if you are interested in seeing how that is another option Up until this point, we have been pressing our seams open. Um, for these borders, I do press out um, because there is so much going on in this side and then nothing going on over here. I find that it works best to just press out. Just give that a little press, repeat on the other side. The next step before I can sew any of my other borders on is I need to head on over to my cutting table to trim the excess off here. As I mentioned, it is time to trim these before I can add the next borders, and I have a couple options. If you have the sidekick or the super sidekick, you can use those, or you can use a straight ruler, so I'll show you how each of those works. With the super sidekick, I'm going to line up the one edge of the ruler, the other edge of the ruler, which are 120 degrees, with this edge and this edge, and they will perfectly, hopefully, perfectly line up with each other. And we wanna make sure that we're not cutting it like this or like this. We wanna try and keep that nice and straight, especially with this side, so that it makes adding the next border on easy. And trim, and if you are left-handed, this will be in reverse, and then for this corner, I'll show you how we're gonna do it with the sidekick. The sidekick is smaller, so it doesn't give you as many points of reference, but it is big enough to do the job. Um, so we're just gonna line up this side, and line up this side, and trim. And if you don't have either of those handy, a regular six by 24 that has um, 60 degree markings on it can work. And so I'm going to line up the 60 degree line with my piece here, and then line up this piece here, and trim. And then I'm gonna head back on over to add my next two border pieces. I'm gonna add them to my final two sides, and I'm gonna leave my top and bottom border to last. So I'll grab my next two longest border pieces. I think those are my longest two. So my next longest two and put them here and here and repeat what I did here and here and go ahead and sew, press and trim. And then I will be able to add my top and bottom and repeat those same steps to finish the table topper. After completing your table topper, it's time to think about quilting. You can quilt it yourself or you could send it out to a long arm quilter. For directions on how to quilt it yourself, I have a link to a video below where I have shown how to do that. That same video also has binding directions for raw candy. If you're going to send it out to a long arm quilter, you may want to give them some direction on what is important to you. So for instance, in this example of a fussy cut raw candy, I told Teresa that I wanted to make sure that you could see all the things that I worked so hard to fussy cut. So she kind of did this, um, I don't even know what that's called. A little bit of like a, a an echo star um, kind of thing going on around and a little bit more of the loops in the middle, but you can really still see all the things that I took the time to do the fussy cutting. 
And then um, I can think if I show you the back, you can actually see better what she did in the outside. She took the opportunity to do some more detailed things in the background um, since there wasn't things that couldn't be quilted over. With my tiny beast, Rock Candy, she did something similar where she stayed away from the animals and did quilting around them. And then she really did some fun things in the background area, especially since I brought some of the background into more of the center of the project. Thank you for tuning in today. If this video was helpful for you, please like it, share your comments with us, and click here to subscribe to this channel. Here are links to the other great gift sew along videos and some of my other videos you might like. Sign up to receive the sew along emails and worksheets at the link posted in the video description below. In the next video, we're going to go over how to cut bias binding with stripes. See you soon.